Stoneware Rabbit. Item Number SCP-979 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures All individuals suspected of being exposed to SCP-979 must be reviewed for changes in psyche. SCP-979 itself should be contained in a wire cage and plastic flooring, approximately 5 meters in length, height, and width. As SCP-979 does not produce waste, there is little need for any bedding. However, SCP-979 should be given a water dispenser of 150 milliliters, refilled daily, to prevent drying out. Also, SCP-979 is allowed one shelter in its cage, consisting of commercial plastic of any color made for medium, two large members of the Laporidae family, normally sold in pet shops for companionship. SCP-979 is to be monitored with a hidden camera 24 hours a day. Should SCP-979's behavior change in any way, it is to be logged and reported to a level 3 or higher personnel. Description: SCP-979 is an animated stoneware figurine in the shape of a member of the family Laporidae. SCP-979 shows subtle differences from traditional members of Laporidae, including, but not limited to the ability to express emotion through facial changes and posture, that is congruent with typical human reactions. SCP-979 lacks proper anatomy, with its ears and back legs being too long and large, and therefore has extreme difficulty with normal movement. The behavior of SCP-979 shows some sentience, but it generally only reacts to any stimuli with fear and or avoidance. Any other reaction must be reported to level 3 or higher personnel. SCP-979 emits a high-frequency noise in response to any stimuli. The volume appears proportionate to SCP-979's level of distress. Extended proximity to SCP-979 causes synesthesia of all senses, typically manifesting after four hours and escalating over a variable period of approximately three weeks. Exposure to the noise produced by SCP-979 has been shown to increase the rate at which synesthesia develops. However, recordings have failed to replicate the effect and, as such, the noise is not believed to be the primary cause. The first sense to be affected is typically hearing, although the reason is unknown. Humans exposed to SCP-979 tend to describe a whispering, rustling voice associated with the sensation of touch and will avoid any physical contact with anything as much as possible. Typically, this first effect appears approximately 10 minutes after exposure. Within one week, exposure to SCP-979 causes synesthesia in at least three senses although which three tends to be dependent on the specific person. A level of psychosis appears to develop at this stage, although whether or not it is from mental disturbance of the synesthesia or something else is unknown. The only recorded personnel, hereby labeled SCP-979-V1, exposed to SCP-979, described symptoms similar to high anxiety, most notably the recurring thought of an imagined entity almost touching their skin at all times especially so during nights, in which the exposed personnel reporting a belief of the imagined entity running any number of limbs up and down their body, just above skin contact. After the passing of approximately two weeks, synesthesia caused by SCP-979 spreads to all senses, although certain senses appear to be less intrusive than others, depending on the specific patient. In SCP-979-V1, the previous recurring thought of the imagined entity became an obsession, and SCP-979-V1 regularly attempted to attack the imagined entity with apparently little success. All inquiries on the appearance of the imagined entity were unsuccessful. SCP-979-V1 attempted suicide approximately blank times during this period, and developed severe insomnia. In addition, SCP-979-V1 described hallucinations of the aforementioned entity, now almost licking their skin, along with other types of contact such as kissing, stroking, and redacted. 
At no point does SCP-979-V1 describe actually being touched. Within three weeks, the synesthesia develops fully in all senses. SCP-979-V1 had extreme difficulty dealing with any kind of sensory information, mind regularly blocking out senses due to overload. SCP-979-V1 displayed behavior similar to SCP-979 itself, and appeared to attempt interaction with hallucinations before falling into a catatonic state. Afterwards, no other progression was shown until a period of five weeks, in which the subject was discovered with a large gash in his torso, organs having been pulled from the body cavity. It is unknown how such a wound came to SCP-979-V1. SCP-979 was found in blank, Chile. SCP-979 was featured in an exhibition by an artist under the pseudonym of The Kind Man in the blank museum. After news reports of hallucinations and an outbreak of synesthesia, SCP-979 was placed under Foundation custody. Addendum Interview Log 979-1 Begin Log Good morning. Please identify yourself. Morning already? Well, last I checked, my name was... Blank. Don't you white-coated bastards have a record of this shit lying around? The time is exactly 9.07 a.m. Please explain for the recording how last night went. What, you didn't see it? Nothing recorded last night was particularly unusual. However, your behavior... You didn't fucking see it? It was hovering over me the whole damn time! At least... Redacted. Things just barely touching me. I could feel it. When it's not the fucking whispering, it was the colors, the damn smells. Ain't there a way you can reverse this synthesia bullshit? I've seen your psychopaths do things that make reality shit itself, for Christ's sakes. Please go into further detail of last night's events according to your perception. Note the camera only caught your erratic behavior before Agent... Blank. ...was forced to intervene. You've gotta be shitting me. With all that fucking technology, you couldn't... Please answer the question. What did you see last night? It ain't seeing a thing, Doc. It was feeling a thing. It was like... I fucking breathed too hard. I'd touch whatever the thing was. It was so damn close. Just watching me and hovering. Could hear it saying something right in my ear. Bastard's fucking with me, he is. I could feel his smell. It was like a static of the dust on a TV screen, but that little tingling is going in you right, right here. Blank touches his sternum. And it just builds up till you have to take a breath. And I swore in my life I almost felt the bastard's hand. Tentacle thing. He's on me right now. Can't you fucking see it? Blank grows increasingly agitated and begins noticeably hyperventilating. Oh god. Man, I feel it now. Fuck. Make it stop! Make it stop! Blank begins to attempt to slam his face into the side of the interview table, presumably in a suicide attempt. After repeated orders to stop were ignored, Agent Blank administered a sedative and took subject back to his observation chamber. End log.